Hello, my name is Wesley and I would like to thank you for watching another one of my lab experiment videos for my Biological Science Class 214 Microbiology Lab. Today we're going to be going over cereal dilution, but there's a few things we need to cover before we get into this video. First and foremost, my lab attire. It is a long sleeve shirt to simulate a lab coat, my glasses so that one I can see, and two to simulate my safety goggles or safety shields. I have long pants on with no holes, no cuts, no tears or rips in them. And I also have on closed toed shoes. So if I spill anything during this lab, none of it gets on my toes. Now that we've covered what I'm wearing, let's get into some of the items that we're going to need in order to complete this cereal dilution lab. Okay, so the items that we are going to need for this lab are our gloves, water and food coloring, which will make our culture, our simulated Bunsen burner, four conical tubes, a glass test tube, which will house our culture. Our conical tubes is what we will dilute our culture into. Uh, one pipette, a marker, a spreader, and three plates that we have previously made uh, with our agar solution. So now that we have all of the necessary items to perform this lab, let's get into cereal dilution. All right, let's talk about how we're setting up our workbench. As you can see, I've got my four conical tubes up here and let's talk about what's going to be happening during this cereal dilution. What's going to be happening is our culture is going to be diluted amongst all four of these conical tubes. Now how we do that is very specific in that all four of these conical tubes will have nine milliliters of a dilution liquid. In this case it's going to be water. So we will be taking one milliliter out of our culture and placing it into our first tube. We'll mix it up and then we will take one milliliter out of tube one and place it into tube two and we'll mix that up. And then we'll do that for tube three and then again for tube four until all four of our tubes have a portion of the original culture mixed into it. Now these will decrease in a logarithmic form by a power of 10 each time. So we will have those labeled. And in a normal lab situation, we would be using one pipette per transfer. But because we're simulating this, we will be using the same pipette. So we need to mark it so we know where our one milliliter is. So off camera, I have added three milliliters of water into this conical tube. The reason why I've added three is because I need to take one milliliter out of this so I can mark this pipette. So I've got my pipette in here and I'm going to dip my pipette in and in order to get no air bubbles in it, I'm gonna draw up one milliliter of liquid, like so. And notice that there's no air in the bottom of the pipette and there's no water in the bulb. So all this is liquid. That's one milliliter. So I'm going to mark it. And it's right there that we see that, right at the base of the bulb. And I'm just gonna add that water back in there. We won't be wasteful today. So now as you can see, my pipette is marked where one milliliter of water is going to be. So let's get these labeled. Now our conical tubes have been labeled correctly and they have their non milliliters of liquid, dilution liquid in there. We are ready to begin our cereal dilution. I have my Bunsen burner here, which is currently off, so let's get that turned on. I'm gonna turn the gas on, and I'm gonna close the air vents, and I'm going to ignite the Bunsen burner. Once the Bunsen burner has been ignited, I'm gonna control the temperature of the flame by adjusting the air vents at the bottom. I'm gonna be looking for a blue internal flame, which will be the hottest part of the flame for my Bunsen burner. Okay, we've got that set up and it is ready to rock and roll. So let's do our first dilution. So I have 
my culture here. Remember to always pick it up by the glass and not by the cap. So I'm going to remove the cap of the test tube. I'm going to flame the tube and I'm going to get one milliliter of culture. Now I'm making sure that I'm going in vertically to the culture. And it may take a couple of attempts, but that's fine. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to flame and recap. And we're going to get that set off. And now let's dilute it into our test tube one. So in the same manner, I'm going to remove the cap, going to flame the tube, and I'm going to put my culture in it. One milliliter of culture in. I'm going to flame once again, and then I'm going to recap. And then we're going to shake it up and make sure that our culture gets nice and infused in all of the liquid. As you can see, the liquid is a nice blue tint, and we have 10 milliliters of liquid in there. Now let's continue this process for each one. So as before, we're going to remove the cap, we're going to flame, and we're going to take 10, one milliliter out of test tube one. We're going to reflame, and then we're going to cap. Picking up the second tube, we're going to flame. Transfer our liquid, flame again, and recap. And we're gonna shake. Now that that solution has been diluted, we're going to repeat the process for a third time. And we're going to remove the cap, we're going to flame, we're going to take out one milliliter of our diluted culture, and it may take more than one attempt. And then we're going to flame, and then recap. And for the third one, we're going to uncap flame. Place our diluted culture into the dilution liquid. Flame once again and recap. And then we're gonna shake. Now that it's been diluted, one final time. Uncap, flame, one milliliter of dilution. flame, and recap. And a fourth and final time, remove the cap, flame, transfer, flame once again, recap, and shake. Okay, and as you can see, as we progress down the tubes, our dilution liquid gets less and less blue. So now that we have successfully diluted from our original culture into our conical tubes, we are ready to place them on plates so we can observe the growth patterns. Since we have successfully diluted our culture into these conical tubes, let's transfer them to plates in order to watch how their colonies grow. Now we're looking for colonies to grow between the numbers of 20 and 300. So you want to make sure that the plate will grow at least 20 colonies of bacteria, but no more than 300 
just so you can count them properly. So in order to get a range of growth, we're gonna place them into our plates from one of each of the tubes, beginning with tube two, going down to tube four. So let's start with plate A. So plate A is gonna come from test tube two. So we will go ahead and prepare to do that. So we will take our tube two and we're gonna take one milliliter uh, from this test tube. So as we did before, we will uncap, we will flame, and we will remove one milliliter of solution. And flame, and then recap. Now we will place this one milliliter of solution onto our agar solution. And then using our spreader, we will make sure that it gets spread all over the place. You want a nice even coating all over your agar solution. And now that that has been coated, we will recap it and place it aside. And we'll move on to plate B. Plate B is gonna be coming from test tube three. So as we did with test tube two, we will uncap, we're gonna flame, we're gonna remove one milliliter of solution from it, reflame, and recap. Now we're gonna place that one milliliter of solution into our plate. And then we're going to spread it around. And place it to the side. And our third and final plate, plate C, is gonna be coming from test tube four. So let's do as we did with the others. Remove our cap, flame, and remove one milliliter of solution. Reflame and recap. Place our one milliliter of solution into the plate, onto the field, and then spread it out evenly. Try not to tear your agar solution. And now we'll place these into an incubator and at a later process, we would be able to count how many colonies are growing and that would tell us how many bacterial cells are in our solution. Here we have our final products of the day. We have our culture diluted into four conical tubes, each by a logarithmic power of 10. And then we have transferred tubes two, three, and four onto our plates so we can watch how many colonies will grow and count them to determine the number of cells that we have in that culture. So now that we are finished with this lab, let's turn our Bunsen burner off and you just shut the gas off and it will go off. Now, thank you again for watching this video on how to do serial dilution. My name was Wesley, and I hope you stay tuned for our final lab for Biological Science Class 214, Microbiology. Thank you.